Hi guys, today's video will be about, uh, it's going to be an introduction to the concept of linear regression and prediction. So, um, linear regression, um, it's it's got a pivotal use in the re in the for the regression model, and that's for predicting and forecasting changes in one variable as a result of changes in another. So, for example, uh, changes in price of groceries. Groceries over time. Or maybe um, changes in the the price of housing. Um, it's gone up over the over the time, and they want to map that out so people can see when they can actually um, benefit from um, buying houses and things like that. So, um, however, the problem is the OL OLS model will only provide a good forecast prediction within a relevant range. So, this relevant range is usually within the within the vicinity vicinity of its data points collected. So, for example. Um, it wouldn't be wise to get, for example, if you had the um, the other OL, OL, OLS model, like something like this, so BO plus B1X. Um, it wouldn't be wise to um, extrapolate um, this relationship out of, so like a lot of, like really out of context from the actual data points used to make this um to make this um, OLS model, okay? So the, once the model is extrapolated, the parameters may lo no longer provide accurate um, outcomes or it, it may even provide ridiculous amounts. So for example, I have here, so income per year in thousands equals to uh, 50.42 plus 0.3 height, okay? So if height of someone was 150 centimeters, what would be their forecasted income? So their income, would equal to minus 0 0.42 plus 0 0.3, 150. Okay, and if we calculate that, minus 50.42 plus 0 0.3, 150. Okay, that gives us a total of minus four, minus 5.42. So they make they're actually losing money because of their height. However, um, the reason is uh, due to this is because when we were actually making this model. Uh, we didn't consider um, heights that were this small. Um, obviously, they, they used data points that were actually larger, and as a result, this kind of uh, relationship won't work if you take that um, take this this uh, model out of context of what it was created from. Okay. Okay. So the predictive capacity of um, regression models um, are heavily relied on for um, time series data, especially. So, for example, inflation rate or the average house price in the city over time. Okay. So an example is um, if OL OLS for house prices was the house price equals to um, YF, which is um, the Y variable forecast, the forecast of the Y vari <coughs> variable equals to 250 plus 8.94 T, where T equals um, from 1 to 25 years. And this report is from 1970 to 1995. So what is the predicted price in the 23rd year of the model? So all we need to do is plug in 23 into that T, and then we'll get YF equals to 250 plus 8.6, 23, which equals... 250 plus 8.96 times 23, that gives us 449.87, okay? So we can expect, or well, it's forecasted, that in the 23rd year, the uh, the price of the house will be uh, $449,870, okay? So if we drew it on something, uh, on something like this, like a curve, it'd be 23 here, T at the bottom, Y here, for, 449.87 okay so now the problem is what if our prediction is actually wrong and what if um, our margin of error, what is our margin of error for this prediction so and then how confident are we with this prediction okay so we need to then construct a confidence interval so again confidence interval is um, very similar to what we did before so remember if we have a margin of error the endpoints of the interval are equal to um, x so the um, sample mean uh, plus or minus so plus for the upper bounds minus for the lower bounds uh, z alpha on 2 times the standard error okay so similarly if we apply this to the um, confidence interval for a point uh, in our regression model it would equal to theta hat theta hat equals to 
equals to um, beta 0 plus beta 1 x okay so for example in our case it would be 449.87 plus or minus t alpha on 2 so it will give in a um, significance level of um, for example 0 0.05 and then we divide by 2 and then you get um, t uh, 0 0.025 n minus n minus 2 so um, because there's two parameters that's why they're, um, they're the degrees of freedom are reduced okay so um, we have 25 years worth so 25 minus 2 is 23 okay and then we just multiply that by the um, standard error that we have so if we we usually have um, to get the standard error, you usually get um, an Excel, an Excel, um, an Excel output, and it will um, it will tell you what the standard error is. Uh, so. Okay, so I'll just get one for you guys to have a look at. Okay, so usually when you have an Excel output kind of like this, the regression model, um, it will tell you the standard error associated with um, associated with um, the certain parameter so obviously it would be it'd be this one and you pick that one as your standard um, standard error and all you need to do is sub that into here okay so if we did apply this for example if our standard error was 0 0.04151 okay then um, the value that we get for um, y hat theta would be um, 449.87 plus or minus so we have to go to um, so plus or minus t 0 0.02523 okay so t 0 0.0 um, 0 0.025 so down this column uh, two tail tests so 0 0.05 uh, 20 23 here so uh, 2.069. Yep, 2.069 uh, multiplied by the standard error, which we got was 0 0.04151. Okay, and then that would give you a bounds of 449.87 plus. Uh, it will just be 2.069 times 0 0.04151, okay? So it'd just be 449.87 plus or minus 0 0.0858419, okay? So the upper bounds would be uh, this number plus that, and the lower bounds would be this number minus that, okay? Alrighty, so just explaining this again, so um, the t-statistic is t um, with alpha over 2 because again we're going to do it, um, we're, we're doing it with um, with uh, confidence levels, so therefore there are two, it's a two-tailed test, and then n minus 2, so is your t-statistic for the associated significance level, okay, and then um, after that we need to do the degrees of freedom, that is actually a v, not an r, and then it's n minus 2, so the sample size, which is 25 minus 2, um, due to our parameters, and then lastly, the significance level. Okay, so that's the end of the video today, guys. I hope you learned something. Thank you. Cut study time with concise video summaries by top students. Visit SpoonFeedMe.com to view more free videos in this course and hundreds of others.